this up, will you? The good news? The gaming gods have bequeathed upon their mortal frauds the polygonal panacea we've pined for lo these many years! A game that defied both the shareholders and conventional wisdom by daring to be set not in the once prolific planes of World War II, the lens flare flooded tactical nuke lob and passages of the present, or the look mommy I watched Blade Runner butt fucking of what Infinity Ward confuses with the future, but rather the unbridled futility, tragedy, and heroism of World War I. The bad news? That game bears the byline of of Battlefield. The qualitative arc of the Battlefield series reads like a GameStop stock report, from the Kilimanjaran heights of the exceptional Battlefield 1942 and its fuck mounds of mods, to the virtually unplayable launch version of Battlefield 4 and more peaks and valleys than a Tijuana tit job in between, I'd sooner spend a weekend with Tara Reid and then lick my fingers than trust this franchise to do right by the Great War. Fortunately for my fellow history huff and mondo dweebs, for the first time in at least three games, DICE decided to give a fuck, emerging with an artfully erected monument to perhaps the darkest single chapter of the 20th century that didn't involve Kurt Cobain, a greenhouse, and a buckshot BJ. In the pre-release foreplay phase, I was staggered to learn that DICE had been pitching this very fucking game for damn near a decade. But wonder of wonders, Electronic Arts saw more value in dropping the gross domestic product of India down the shitter, pinching out Star Wars The Old Republic, than green lighting a game DICE might actually be inspired to fucking make. Sure, the game's more melodramatic than a 14-year-old's live journal. I'm literally about to fucking kill myself! But cast your looking glass upon the mottled pages of history and you'll see the telenovela tear jerking for what it is. A clumsy attempt to convey the palpable horror of the most pointless, destructive conflict in human history. As far back as the myriad World War I mod for Battlefield 1942, it's been apparent that gamers long to leer from the trenches of the Somme, shell-shocked and beset by trench foot, suffocating in a noxious bullia bays of bisulfide and Belgian BO, and the almost complete absence of trench warfare sequences in both single and multiplayer smack so hard of executive meddling you couldn't spot the cognitive dissonance from fucking IO. As if they patted our heads in unison, handed us a lolly, and condescendingly crooned, all right children, you can have your World War One game, so long as the combat bears as distant a fucking resemblance to the actual conflict as humanly possible. And while I get the operative logic that squatting in trenches counting down the New York minutes till it's time to go over the top only to be shredded to steaming flesh rivulets by howitzer fire, doesn't seem to burst at the scenes with commerciality, but it also presents unique opportunities for storytelling, something Battlefield 1 has an unprecedented focus on regardless. But like cringeworthy clockwork, as with any EA product, comes their perfidious propensity for reducing the most complex socio-historical racial divides bridged by the fires of war into a glorified goddamn McDonald's commercial. Look, I get that soldiers of African ancestry served in World War I, perhaps even more than the pages of history have formerly recorded, but if Battlefield I is a viable metric, the Great War was fought between a tribe called Quest and the Wu-Tang Clan. To say nothing of the Saudi Arabian slag who in real life would have been far too busy recovering from a compulsory clitorectomy to laugh it up with Lawrence of Arabia, that this blatant uncoupling from the realities of the conflict it aspires to represent ultimately feels like a nitpick is a a testament to the quality of the game itself. Featuring a four-part campaign, each spotlighting a unique character class or aspect of play, from a tank -em up attack to the eagle-eyed scout, to a Lawrence of Arabia sub-campaign sequence that effectively metamorphoses Battlefield 1 into the very first World War 1 stealth game, albeit one with the depth of a Dixie cup, each operates not only as a singular spotlight on one of the many multifarious offensives in the Great War, but a kind of half-assed preamble for each character class in the multiplayer experience. And the stealth the snipe craft of the scout to the cyclopean brute force bullet sponges acting as support, DICE has done their damnedest to proffer clear demarcation betwixt the classes without resorting to tactical twattery or spinny cam circle jerks that bust the balance clean the fucking twain. Instead, support feels like a bipedal Potemkin at the expense of fucking moving like one, assault is a whiz with a quick rush but a ripe steamy dump in any other context, and the scout excels at speed and precision but good luck withstanding a swift autumn breeze. Or you can bones McCoy at the fuck up as the medic for a more strategic experience, but amble balls deep into the bullet spray and prepare for a 44 caliber facial. It's an effective mitigating mechanism that disallows demigods without lazily resorting to the Kathy Bates kneecapocalypse that renders all classes equally worthless and thus rendered advanced warfare such a supreme fucking snore. And while Call of Duty characters are about as animated as Stephen Hawking doing river dance, the characters in Battlefield 1, on occasion, 
actually convey a rough approximation of, dare I say it, <gasps> genuine fucking emotion. From a roguish bullshit artist prevaricating his pert ass through the aviation campaign via a framed narrative with all the historical credibility of a Snopes rebuttal, to a grizzled Aussie scout edifying his prepubescent protege in the ways of the sharpshooter one brain matter bespeckled headshot at a time, and then, just as you might be in immediate danger of giving a fuck, the credits roll and it's on to the next asshat. I get the whole, here's a series of fleeting vignettes illustrating why this war chomped a chode approach, and I even concede that it's effective. The question is how much more effective it might have been if it lasted slightly longer than Sterling in a relay race, or... <clears throat> Sterling in an argument. Look, it's one thing to fuck five broads, but who wants to be halted less than a quarter of the way through a sopping wet spelunking session to play musical muffs? Variety's killer and all, but give me depth any day. Oh, but the depths are there, and they are cavernous. Since the glory days of 1942, Battlefield has been a series defined by its peerless multiplayer, and Battlefield 1, at least when its hitbox is actually fucking function, is a vanguard in every respect. From conquest to deathmatch, all the greatest hits are pumped in prime, but the bell of the ball by far is the jaw-dropping new operations mode, combining the sprawling size of the best of Battlefield with a continuity and historical context that hasn't been seen in this franchise since the very first game in the series. The doldrums of Deathmatch are eschewed in favor of hour-long motherfucking marathons, the kind of tactically oriented squad-based shooting not seen on this scale since Rainbow Six and Counter-Strike. On the downslope of Turd Mountain, the aiming, shooting, hit detection, in short, the actual fucking gameplay has yet to improve one angstrom from the botch fest to banal field 4. On far too routine a basis, headshots inexplicably become shoulder shots, knee shots transmute into muff shots, hell half the time I need a fucking conversion chart for the basic goddamn gunplay. Spray and pray murder tanks like the supporter assault class will still be a walk in goddamn slaughterhouse, but if you plan to scout it up and snipe a bitch like the beguiling bastard delivering this very rant, quote the razor, adjust the joystick speed first, cause out of the box the controls have more sensitivity issues than Steve Shives, which is deeply depressing as the guns themselves from my girlfriend the Gewehr, to my Weimar waifu the Mauser C96 Red 9, each period-specific pea shooter is almost romantically rendered right on down to the divots and rivets. Fuck, the gun porn alone was half the reason to make this game, and it speaks volumes that I did not walk away disappointed in the least, ensuring at a bare minimum that the weapons have weight, even when the bullets occasionally fucking don't. If only the modernized HUD with its streamlined aerial fonts and minimalist HUD were as tailored to the time period as the fucking rest of it. Do not adjust your computer monitors, the Cubs are world champions, Donald Trump is president, and I am recommending a Battlefield game. Battlefield 1 recaptures the pomp and scope of its period-specific progenitors, and I'm elated to see its shattering sales records as a result. I live in hope that we've witnessed not only the finest entry in this series in over a decade, but fingers crossed, a spanking new World War I franchise of its own. And keeping with EA tradition, I look forward to witnessing its gradual qualitative degradation. I'm Razorfist. God fucking speed! Master.